This is Saurabh, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Aditya. Just one more episode remaining for another milestone episode for the year 2020. What started with a bang on 1st January 2020 when the 150th episode was celebrated. Moving on to the 175th episode, the 200th episode, the 225th episode, the 250th episode and now this Monday we shall be celebrating the 275th episode. Despite all the pseudo negativity created around this illusion called this virus, this flu season, for me, the episodes haven't stopped. This being the 150th consecutive episode since this talk show returned from a break on 4th November 2019 and 125 consecutive episodes since the year 2020 started and 92 consecutive episodes since this pandemic drama and all the illusionary stuff around it began. But for now, let's talk about something different. As you all know, the Indian 20 over domestic competition has reached a stage where a few teams are considered favorites to win the tournament, which include the Delhi Indians, the Mumbai Capitals, the Bangalore Knight Riders. These are the teams considered to be on the top to win this tournament. And in a tournament which has reached the halfway stage, a few teams look dead and buried as far as reaching the semi-finals and the knockout stages are concerned. I have received dozens of messages from my subscribers that when will the commentary resume. Yes, I had taken a break. It's been quite a long break, but the break was for obvious reasons. I was occupied in some other work and now starting this Monday, commentary will return and we will have the same fun we had been having when the commentary stint was happening. This tournament is being played in Dubai, not in the regular venues in India. But this is not the first time this tournament shifted to some other location because of reasons the organizers didn't have a hand in. The previous two reasons were, you already know, in 2009 and in 2014, the first half of the tournament was organized in Dubai because of reasons the, that were beyond the scope of the organizers. So it is not for the first time this tournament has shifted to another location. So what is the excitement about this year? Something that perplexes me. Yes, it is not happening during the regular phase between March and May. That is one big change. The players are in a bubble. They are not supposed to go out of a certain containment zone. There are no crowds. That is the only difference between 2009 and 2014. During the 2019 World Cup, even before the World Cup began, the England team were the favourites. One, because they were hosting it. Two, because they had that ruthless aggression in that four-year intervening period. And three, because the hosts of the previous two World Cups had gone on to win the tournament, which means 2011 India and 2015 Australia. So, by logic, England were the favourites because of these reasons. But I am perplexed as to how experts and pseudo-experts are finding reasons for certain teams to go on to win the tournament. First of all, it's a neutral venue. There are no home grounds for any of the teams. They may be camped at one location, but it doesn't make that ground one's 
home ground. In fact, there is no concept of home and away in such domestic tournaments. As I have been reiterating for the past 12 and a half years, this particular tournament is like summer internship. In this case, winter internship, it's a part-time job for everyone involved. The various stakeholders in the sports athletes, the team management, which includes the coaching staff. Well, for this group, the coaching staff, it's temporary. It's a part-time job. The technical and the production staff, the governing body, all the stakeholders involved for them, it's a part-time job. It's like an internship. It is akin to a summer camp because for most of these players, they're spending time with athletes who are their rivals for at least 10 months a year. Should the various stakeholders involved take this tournament seriously or casually? For me, it should be somewhere between serious and casual. It's a private tournament. The governing body doesn't have any stake in this even though the tournament is happening in a country where the headquarters of the governing body is located and they are loaning out their training facilities to the various teams. They are not giving it for free. They are giving it for a fee. Whichever team goes on to win the tournament, it is not necessary that the players involved in that team or the team which wins, the players involved, especially the active players and not the retired ones, they will be selected by the national selectors of the national team. There is no guarantee. And if this was a world tournament, these teams would not be so lucky. This is the only world tournament, especially in this sport, along with the Australian domestic competition where teams play each other twice and then after that during the semi-finals which have been renamed as the playoffs the teams get an extra chance if you are the top two of the standings so the possibility of a team playing each other three times is there means either the team will have a 3-0 lead over the other team or it will be a 2-1 lead. One thing the organizers in this tournament have heard is or have gone too excited about is the tiebreakers. In football, if the league matches are being played or in hockey, if the match situation is a league match and the scores at the end of full time are tied and each team shares the points. Only when there's a knockout stage that in hockey we see the tiebreaker or the penalty shootouts. So should the super overs only be reserved for situations when it's a knockout stage? Well, according to me, the super overs or the tiebreakers should only be reserved for the knockout stages or if it's the last match for both the teams and they are equal on points and the net run rate that it is the prerogative of the empires and the match referee to say that yes let's have a super over according to me if there is a super over after every match that is every time a match is tied then it will dilute the fun of the super over or the tie breaker so the super overs or the time breakers should only be reserved for the knockout stages that is the semi-finals and the finals but then the performances or the non-performances in this particular tournament is not a guarantee that you would be selected or dropped from the national team there are a lot of examples in this regard because in these tournaments the Players are spread out in different teams. So they become the MVP for that team. But when the same players are to jostle for positions in the national team, the selectors can only select 15 to 20 people. Means 
Despite good performances in this tournament, you may or may not be selected because the selectors have their own logic. And looking at the new selection committee, their relative inexperience in playing international matches and their inexperience overall, one doesn't know with what logic will the selectors select a team, especially when they are limited to 15 or 20. Remember, this is a domestic tournament. The overall squad can be more, but when it's an international match, you have to abide by the international rules and there they restrict the number of players or the squad to 20 maximum, despite all the bio bubble and the virus illusion. Labors of Hercules Chapter 1 You were fortunate, said Hercule Poirot. Sir Joseph said A again. Exceedingly fortunate, said Hercule Poirot firmly. I am, I may say so, without undue modesty at the apex of my career. Very shortly, I intend to retire to live in the country, to travel occasionally to see the world. Also, it may be to cultivate my garden with particular attention to improving the strain of vegetable marrows. Magnificent vegetables, but they lack flavor. That, however, is not the point. I wished mainly to explain that before retiring, I had imposed upon myself a certain task. I have decided to accept 12 cases, no more, no less. A self-imposed labor of Hercules, if I may so describe it. Your case, Sir Joseph, is the first of the 12. I was attracted to it, he sighed, by its striking unimportance. Importance, said Sir Joseph. Unimportance was what I said. I have been called in for varying causes to investigate murders, unexplained deaths, robberies, thefts of jewelry. This is the first time I have been asked to turn my talents to elucidate the kidnapping of a Pekingese dog. Sir Joseph grunted. He said, you surprise me. I should have said you'd had no end of women pestering you about their pet dogs. That certainly, but it is the first time that I am summoned by the husband in the case. Sir Joseph's little eyes narrowed appreciatively. He said, I begin to see why they recommended you to me. You are a shrewd fellow, Mr. Poirot. Poirot murmured, if you will now tell me the facts of the case. The dog disappeared when? Exactly a week ago. And your wife is by now quite frantic, I presume? Sir Joseph stared. He said, you don't understand. The dog has been returned. Returned? Then permit me to ask. Where do I enter the matter? Sir Joseph went crimson in the face. Because I am damned if I will be swindled. Now then, Mr. Poirot, I am going to tell you the whole thing. The dog was stolen a week ago. Nipped in Kensington Gardens when he was out with my wife's companion. The next day my wife got a demand for 200 pounds. I ask you 200 pounds for a damned yapping little brood. It's always getting under your feet anyway. Homer's Iliad Book 2 But first he called his ranking chiefs to council. Beside the ship of Nestor, the warlord born in Pylos. Summoning them together, their Atreides set forth his cunning foolproof plan. Hear me, friends, 
a dream sent by the gods has come to me in sleep down through the bracing god sent night it came like good nestor in features height and build the old king himself and hovering at my head the dream call me on still asleep agamemnon the son of atreus that skill beaker of horses how can you sleep all night a man weighed down with duties your armies turning over their lives to your command responsibilities so heavy listen to me quickly i bring you a message sent by zeus a world away but he has you in his heart he pities you now Zeus commands you to arm your long-haired Achaeans to attack at once, full force. Now you can take the broad streets of Troy. The immortal gods who hold Olympus clash no more. Hera's appeals have brought them round, and all agree. Griefs from Zeus are about to crush the men of Troy. but keep this message firmly in your mind with that the dream went winging off and soothing sleep released me come see if we can arm the achaeans for assault but first according to time honored custom i will test the men with a challenge tell them all to crowd the old locks cut and run in their ships but you take up your battle stations at every point command them hold them back pg woodhouse stiff upper lip jeeps what i feel for emerald stoker is the real thing In my opinion she stands alone and I shall be glad if you will stop going about the place saying that she looks like a pecking geese but Gussie he silenced me with an imperious wave of ham sandwiches it's no good your saying but Gussie the trouble with you Bertie is that you haven't got it in you to understand true love you are a mere butterfly flitting from flower to flower and slipping like freddy vision and the rest of the half wits of whom the drones club is far too full a girl to you is just the plaything of an idol art and anything in the nature of a grand passion is beyond you i am different i have depth i am a marrying man but you can't marry emerald stoker why not we are twin souls i thought for a moment of giving him a word portrait of old stoker to show him the sort of father in law he would be getting if he carried through the project he had in mind but i let it go reason told me that a fellow who for months had been expecting to draw pop basse as a father in law was not going to be swayed by an argument like that however frank my description of him poker could scarcely seem anything but a change for the better i stood there at a loss and was still standing there at a loss when i heard my name called and looking behind me saw stinker and stiffy they were they were waving hands and things and i gathered that they had come to thresh out with me the matter of sir watkin basse and the hard boiled egg the last thing i would have wished at this crucial point in my affairs was an interruption for all my faculties should have been concentrated on reasoning with gussy and trying to make him see the light but it has often been said of bertram booster that when a buddy in distress is drawn to his attention he forgets self no matter what his commitments 
elsewhere the distressed buddy has only to beckon and he is with him with a brief word to gussy that i would be back at an early day to resume our discussion i hurried to where stiffy and stinker stood talk quick i said i am in conference too long to tell you all about it but a serious situation has arisen as according to jeeves one has with you from what he told me i gathered that odds against stinker clicking as regards that vicarage have lengthened more letting i dare not wait upon i would ness on pop passes part he gave me to understand too bad of course one can see it from sir watkins point of view said stinker who if he has a fault besides bumping into furniture and upsetting it is always too tolerant in his attitude towards the dregs of humanity he thinks that if i had dwelled the distinction between right and wrong more vigorously into the minds of the infants bible class the thing wouldn't have happened i don't see why not said stiffy nor did i in my opinion no amount of sunday afternoon instruction would have been sufficient to teach a growing boy not to throw hard boiled eggs at sir watkin basse but there's nothing i can do about it is there i said to bet there is said stiffy we haven't lost all hope of sweetening him the great thing is to let his nervous system gradually recover its poise and what we came to see you about bertie was to tell you on no account to go near him till he's had a chance to simmer down don't seek him out leave him alone the sight of you does something to him for more awesome content tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with aditya